it was kind of the perfect storm. It was the right time, the right people, the right administration, the right, uh, the right kids. Uh, it, it was just a series of things that all laid out to just make this the perfect spot to put it all together. There was a lot of enthusiasm here about this environmental science program and there were folks here who knew about net zero energy and knew the importance of um, high performance buildings. There's also just a crew of people here that are doers. There's, there's people here that have, out of all the places that they could be, have chosen Hood River to be. It, it all started with a, with a construction bond and we went out to our community and asked for their support in order to uh, up, upgrade all of our buildings. We chose not to build any new schools, but we felt that every school in our district needed, needed some attention. And in the case of Hood River Middle School, there was a bus barn here, which had fallen into disrepair, was the music room, and it wasn't a great space for kids to be learning music. So when we looked at what we could do here at Hood River Middle School, there was, there was discussion about removing the bus barn and building a new music room and supporting our music program and our kids and giving them a space that we could all feel proud of. And, and then a part of that discussion transitioned to the environmental science program here, which had really taken on a life of its own. And if we were going to be building a standalone building, it made sense to incorporate uh, another classroom as well. So, um, so there's sort of a dual, a dual purpose here. They said, sure, you can, you can have a garden. And so back behind the uh, old music building that was six foot tall blackberries and no sun, they said, yeah, go for it, knock yourself out, right? And so we looked at that space and said, well, the best garden that would be here would be a, an arboretum of native plants. And so we started in and we built our trails and laid out the forest. And, and kids were totally psyched and having a great time. We were doing lots of science and lots of writing and connecting it to our culture and our place and talking about what's supposed to be here. And um, We did well with that and so we were able to expand out and we started a, a smaller food garden and we had a pond and uh, we got a grant for a small solar panel and we had plans for a small greenhouse and it was all just kind of underneath what this new space became eventually. But uh, nine years or seven years ago we went to the National Green Building Conference in Portland and I took 35 kids and we went and we, we were the only middle school group to do a presentation and we had our, our posters and our pictures of all the design elements that we wanted to have in our system and we still have that poster and it's pretty crazy to think that all the elements that we had in that original plan are all here. Uh, they just all got bigger. What happened was that as, as the program grew here, more parents wanted more kids involved and, and it just kind of grew to the point where what we need to do is not have it be just a one home project but a school-wide project so now the food and conservation science program has classes for every grade level every kid through the year spends time in the project